recess and reconvene the Stafford County Board of Health. All right. Are we ready to go then? Yep. We'll All right. First quarter statistics. This hasn't really changed much since we had our meeting. Some of 
administrator up there, what they do about this. Oh, well, we just refer to the rabies compendium. They didn't even mention it there about Because we had a rabbit skunk in the county with two dogs that tangled with it, and the dogs had to be put down because they were not. They hadn't been any use. In the past, they haven't. They weren't current. So the dogs paid the price. So I think we need to start working on um, this is a I need to add to do that because I have two straight dogs I called the sheriff about in my yard Tuesday morning. And they were there all morning. I have no idea where they came from. And where'd they go? No oh, idea. Yeah. I called the sheriff and that's the last I said, no of them. <laughs> I don't know if he came and loaded them up or chased them off or what there, happened. You know, you can tell they've been out <coughs> running around for a long time because they were skinned up pretty good. Yeah. I think Joe has to be involved in that. Joe Sheepak has to do some of that. <coughs> but I do like that second page where it's the person that's the owner. If they've had the animal more than three days and fed it, they're considered the owner. So, <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> and then I, I, a long time ago, I quit believing people when they told me that I was ever because they'll either lie to you or they'll give you another dog's tag or something. It's happened one more. I don't believe anybody about that anymore. Do you? Nope. See? Yeah. <laughs> Problem is you run into the vets, it's a different rule of thumb. You know, some want rabies backs every year, some say no, it's good for two years. Three years? And that has a slim tail. Just run into a vet says theirs is good for three thing. years. And I'm going, how do I do this with city it tags? It depends. Mm. It depends on your ordinance, though. You have to follow your ordinance. Yeah, our ordinance says it year. has to have current proof, as ours uh, one says current proof. Uh, so what we're doing now is when they bring a slip from their vet, we're wanting expiration put on it. And then they have to bring that piece of paper back in every year to read by tags. Yeah, that's good. Otherwise, it's a record keeping on here. Whatever your local ordinance says, yeah. it says every year they have to be there. Yeah, ours says current. And if they, some people like to try to give it themselves, that doesn't count. If you immunize your own I don't think they can legally do that. Huh? I don't think they can legally do that. No, they can't. They do it in Nebraska. Because you can't find a vaccine here. No, but you go to Nebraska. Yeah. Right? You know, I think some people have done that, and it doesn't matter. Outside runs because I can't put dogs in the out of the kennels. There you go. So I'm instead of five dollars a day, it's fifteen dollars a day for ten days. Not really feeling too sorry. Oh, find out from other clerks. Get copies from that. I tried Rice County and she never sent anything back. When you're five a minute, I'll ask about their the dogs at large still too. Straight on. Because according to the sheriff, we don't have nothing in place. How oh, fish is it? <clears throat> Supposedly, if, fish, if the dog's bit somebody more than twice, it's supposed to be put down as a vicious animal. And local costs. I've tried. Because I've been bit by them and somebody else got bit by the same dog. We put them down over there. Yeah. If our judge orders it. Well, then that would be nice. Order. I, check I mean, I don't want to kill somebody. Timber's ordered to put down last probably last year, two months. Over yeah. Sylvia. Timber's ordered to put down the last two months. A pack of dogs got into this guy's, uh, <coughs> were they llamas or alpacas or oh, yeah. whatever, last fall? Yeah. Was it last fall? And they killed, I don't know how many animals. Of course, the dogs disappeared. Can I display this in your to make copies of it. Colored. Is it colored? I can make colored copies. I don't you. Know. Oh. <laughs> I have a colored copy. Thanks. Do you have one in there somewhere? I didn't put it in there. Look at that. Yeah. Stack of Boston. I'm going to 
health fair, you know, we've gotten so good at it, we didn't have to meet this year. I heard that. We yeah. just got down yeah. to a, a couple science. emails or something. Yeah, we did it by email. We are so good now. Uh -huh. well, there's no. Do you have to try and go to all those locations? Then? What? Do you have to go to all those different locations where you're doing the health fair? No, no. Um, I'm going to Maxwell, and the hospital is going to have some Yeah, I'll go to Maxwell on Wednesday morning. Oh, I don't have to. Yeah. I didn't really realize if you had them in that many different locations. Is that I think we've been now, I think that's the last few years that they've really? expanded out to the outlying areas. That's good. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like the flu clinics, people start liking them. Every year you go, you get more people. And they know they don't have to travel. Yeah. Okay, let's see. The last thing I have is. I don't know if Doug knows it, but I have an emergency, public health emergency preparedness grant. It's different than your emergency preparedness grant. Yeah, I didn't know you had one for that. Yes. And Just actually, I got We're hoping to get our EMPG grant and get in this year, so it sounds like we might do a little bit more than we did last year. Um, I get a 3% increase this year for Stafford County and the coalition. I mean, South Central Kansas gets a little bit of a hit. They get less than I get one. Um, $9,105. Is that contingent on the feds letting go of the money? Is that a no, it's already a done deal for this year. Okay. Well, I was told that our EMPGs depend upon when the federal government releases the money to the state. last regional meeting in Hutchinson, a lady came up to me, and I have a card over there on my stuff, and she is the one we were to contact for any type of disaster stuff. We no longer contact Pratt. Donna's sole job is to raise money, they told me. <laughs> I will give you a copy of her card, because she okay. says any disaster, she is, she's out of Hutchinson, but she is the one to be contacted. Okay. I said, we've always contacted Donna, and she said her sole job is to raise money. I didn't know that. I didn't either. <laughs> I'll give you a gift. And then I also think yeah. the cannonball. She really didn't yeah. hear right. Yeah. She didn't hear it. It worked a lot better this time feeding people. Did you notice? Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. My meeting, the meeting quadrupled in size. Yeah, he had a good show. <coughs> All right. That's the end of mine. Anybody got questions? What about school immunizations? I mean, we discussed this before. Yeah. About
things pop out of not having the immunizations. I've heard um, some talk about that. But. They can have a religious or a medical exemption. <coughs> the medical has to be signed off by a physician. Yeah. They used to have to Kansas tried to pass a personal, So is everybody in Stafford or Maxwell immunized or do some of them have exemptions? I, I think there's probably a couple of medical exemptions. By and large, most of them are not sure. Becky's really on it. She's pretty sharp. And Chelsea doesn't make like a five Does she? Nope. Nope. She's <laughs> <laughs> like running up against a brick wall. They're the year planning. Huh? Oh, do you want to take the, the health care stuff back? The yeah. supplies to figure out the health department? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, right. You have any drugs for me to take back? I do. You yeah. yeah. can stop and get them too. All right. All right. Great. Saturday, Saturday's collection day. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The Board of Health meeting is adjourned and we'll reconvene as the county commission. Do you have something? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fall. Ten, 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 ten. Please don't fall. <laughs> no. Well, you know, it was the C spun oval I didn't even warn. You know that's a boring meeting in your football team. Yeah. Okay, no, it was cross. It was cross. Oh no. Okay. Okay. The only thing that I really have for you guys, the um, ambulance license renewal, we had to get in. And the one thing we lack is they were showing Steve still as the emergency services director. So this is just stating that you guys said um, they need the director and then the effective date. And I just need your signatures to send it to the state. We've been very busy operational wise. Um, we had the state wardens or the um, ambulances inspected for the mechanical aspect of them. All of them passed. So when we get this in, um, then the state board will or come out and evaluate the ambulances. Each one of the ambulances full in the front, back, check dates, make sure everything's there. So we have that coming up. EMT class is wrapping up. Um, we're in the last two weeks EMT class. Um, we have six. Well, we have seven actually. Um, six are looking to, to make it probably. Um, and then Saturday, if you guys see a helicopter in the air, don't worry. Um, the life team's coming out. We're doing a life team landing zone class and extrication class. The fire department's going to get into on that too. So if you guys want to come in, cut up a car, do whatever. Um, and then the next Saturday, um, we're having scenarios around town. So you may hear ambulance sirens or and life teams going to come out for that also. So and it leaves a lot of people get excited when they see the helicopter yeah, in the air. So. <laughs> well, in the weather, we discussed the weather. I said, yeah, it depends yeah, on. Yeah. Um, we're doing it in the morning, so if they come out, they may beat the weather, but I'm not expecting this Saturday. However, next Saturday. So, and then Sean, um, the AEMT, will actually come in Friday to do his paperwork, and then he will have uh, first shift Sunday with me. So, okay. Okay. <sighs> we're getting it rolling. So, that's all we really have for you guys this week, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It's in the escape. I forgot it. I had it in my pocket okay. three times yesterday, and then you got it. So I will run out and get it to you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Huh? I make a motion we adopt the minutes of April 16th. Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt the minutes from April 16th. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. We have one. one. <laughs> it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's $45. I make a motion we adopt the tax roll correction. Uh, second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt the tax roll corrections. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. copy of letters she sent this to Joe about the current status of the tax sale and he'll send out his letter so some of these will be paid so the 36 parcels <coughs> excuse me hopefully will drastically decrease hi um let's see 
September the second. Right. And I gave you a letter from economic development. Mm -hmm. That Sydney's project. I don't know if you guys were interested in it or not. Any questions? Yeah. Student. I, I, student. I think it's to a student. Do they give you the name of that student? Mm -hmm. No. No, it's just supposed you to be generic. So you don't really know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. So Nita could actually draft us a letter and we could sign it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 it was my understanding. Yeah. Yes. Form letter. Mm -hmm. If you know of a student who's graduated right now, that makes more sense. That you know. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. Not just as for those graduating yeah, class of 2014. Yeah. Congratulations! Yeah. It's, it yeah, was I my see. understanding that um, yeah. maybe Sydney yeah. could give us a list of the names. And if you uh, know the student, you write one. I guess to put it in memory, but yeah. look at it 10 years from now. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the time of year we are submitting uh, our comprehensive plan. It's getting heavier every year. <laughs> well, I thought I'd, I'd bind it and try to save some of the the copy. I end up with so many copies around my office. But um, we are. Uh, requesting the same amount of money as we did as we received last year and um, this sets out the goals and objectives of how we do business and um, what we plan to do for the next year uh, we still have a pretty young staff and um, so a lot of what our goals are is just making sure that we're continuing with training for evidence-based practices and also that we are um, our policies are in line with evidence-based practices for uh, community supervision. Um, our last completed year was fiscal year 2013. We had 105 offenders that were closed by the court. 77 percent of those um, completed without entering the prison system, which our uh, state goal is 75 percent at minimum. So we're on on task with that. Uh, we look at what the risks are and kind of what are the trends for the and successful completers, and I think on page four I just have um, a little uh, snapshot of what, what we really try to concentrate on, uh, education and employment, and that they have stable residents, that they uh, maintain sobriety and drug and alcohol, and uh, which kind of creates their overall uh, good attitude and orientation. And that's really, um, it's, it seems like uh, it's taken a, kind of a long time to develop Oh, duh. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the main thing is, especially with our offenders, and especially when they have been such uh, long-time offenders, that they, you just think, why don't you get this? Well, because they just don't know. They don't know how to start. So our job is trying to get them on a roadmap to success, and, and those are the biggest bangs for the buck, I guess, is what we've, uh, I've determined with, with our research, and it really matches what the trends are for the state and uh, trying to be uh, positive about it. So um, really working with uh, local uh, providers to plug them into uh, good jobs, especially good jobs that um, support people in recovery or um, you know, and furthering their education, getting their GD, all of that good stuff. So what's the criteria on, say, on uh, intensive supervision level number one? Is that that's are they the first offenders? No, those are we love. We do an assessment do that depends on what their risks yeah. are, and level one is the highest risk. Okay. And then the lowest risk is level four. So when we want to move them from, you know, they come onto the program, we assess the last year's behavior. You expect it to be higher risk. Then we do another one at um, at six months, and then another one at discharge. So like the uh, graph that you were looking on on page five, <laughs> that just says that. If you're lower risk, you're, we have higher success of the higher successful um, terminations. And so, uh, like level one, we had, um, there were only two people that were successful completers. 
five were um, went to prison. And then when you go graduate to level four, which is our lowest level of supervision, we had 27 of those people. Mm -hmm. At the time of their discharge, they were level four. 27 uh, did not go to prison. And, and no, yeah. Because that is like any offenders, you know. Yeah. I only, only robbed the convenience store, you know. I'm a no, it's I... more on risk. And see, that's <laughs> what a lot of the sentencing guidelines are kind of moving toward is yeah. risk. For they, we had one, and I know this was a it was a juvenile example, but they it really hit home for me. Was there was a, a group of kids that uh, went to a park and like beat, up, beat an animal. Mm -hmm. There was one person that was the ringleader, but all four of them got convicted of the right. same crime. You know, and so they want to assess what was the risk. Well, that that kid that was kind of the ringleader that got everybody um, really didn't have any supervision at home. We had engaged in drug and alcohol uh, at an early age. You know, and all of those high risk factors versus the other ones. Yes, they did the same crime, but they had parents that were punishing them at home because of that behavior. They had, you know, maybe this was the first time they had used alcohol or, you know, some of those right. things. So okay. I think that w that's kind of how, that's what clicked for me was, you know, because we did come from, this is the box, you fit into the box in whatever square you are, but it is, it, people are different and they're driven by different, different things. And there's some people, you know what, they're just not going to get it. Right. <laughs> and we're going to snap it, I'm not going to sacrifice uh, public safety for our outcomes. I mean, I think that we do a very good job at trying to get people back before the court to be sanctioned um, very quickly. Um, and, you know, the state of Kansas has moved to a lot of different types of um, sanctioning. Uh, we can do jail time. You see those probably as you're paying the bills for housing other offenders out of, um, in the jail. But um, there's also uh, the Department of Corrections has, uh, this year has done 120 and 180 day prison stints that for violations. So they're trying to eliminate the reduction or the uh, revocations and the all the prison beds, which is the most expensive um, sanctioning. So and especially when we have ours go and um, they may not have that much time. So they want they want shorter bursts and see if that makes a difference. Um, so they've got, the, with this House Bill 2170, you have somebody that might go for uh, 120 or 180 days and they come back onto supervision with us. And then we try to, to get them back on track. So, um, you know, in theory, it, it should work. We'll see how, what the long-term effects of that are. Because it doesn't change the fact that when somebody goes to jail, the rest of their life kind of falls apart even more. <laughs> you know, the child, so get further behind on the child support, don't have a job, more resentments or whatever. So, but we still have, we, we need to just keep trying. So, anyway, I could talk about that stuff okay. all day long. Well, so I'm sorry. Actually, we'll actually learn something more than 220 days. Well, yeah, we hope. But, um, and on page seven, I do uh, want to, I, the uh, position for the, on our advisory board, uh, still didn't work out with, uh, I know we had talked about the rec director um, at one point, but he just said he just had too much on his plate. It seems like I forget about it until we have a meeting scheduled again, and I'm like, dang it! <laughs> so, I don't know if anyone um, that you know that would be willing to serve on our board. It is a two-year um, uncompensated, but we do provide a pretty good lunch, and uh, we'll pay for mileage to get over and back. It's usually, uh, at, at most, it's once a quarter, but I would say that we probably, if I don't need to have a meeting, there's things that don't have to be um, approved to be submitted. I try not to waste anybody's time. Uh, I'll do an e email update and um, get everybody on board. So. As I recall, it was one of the minority persons. Well, at this point, I think that we're just looking for someone that's breathing. And then, and you know, I, uh, you know, of course, our um, statutorily we are required to have um, people that uh, are representative of the community and have, um, and it, it just how it worked out. The uh, 
it would be ideal to have somebody that was minority um, to serve. But like I said, this has been really hard to fill. And uh, I did have, I filled the, uh, Bill Higgins was the Rice County Sheriff's Officer. He, uh, Rice County appointee, and he is not um, the sheriff there anymore. So we, I have replaced that. Um, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. So. <coughs> If anyone, you know, know if anybody here would be willing to. I'm just thinking about Hoffman. You know, he does the foster care and oh, Brandon. Brandon Hoffman. He's awful. Busy, but yeah. Oh, kids. He'd be good. What's the name of the agency? Silver Stafford, yeah. Brandon Hoffman. He's here to see us. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just thinking, you know. He works with the state taking in foster kids. Oh. And uh, it just, his name just popped in. It's kind of in the know of his, his brother's a record, state representative, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He can get he's got about 10 or 12 kids at home, too. Yeah. Probably 10 or 12 of them that he's already raised that are out that he has to kind of supervise as well. So. Right. He'd be good if he'd do it. He'd be worth calling him up. Right? I'll ask um, Judge uh, Walters is going yeah. to He's starting up the. What, the bed and breakfast and the staff room piece oh. taking that over here. Okay. Well, we're just the new building, I guess. I don't know if yeah. yeah. it happens gets, with that. Yeah. It's the, the funds. Yeah. yeah. It, was just, it was just a name that popped in my mind. I can't think of anyone else. But, uh, what either of you would like to serve on that board? Shane might. <laughs> <laughs> if he Shane's pretty up. busy. Yeah. And my phone don't remind me to show up for meetings. So. <laughs> we have um, a, uh, Terry Keyser is a commissioner in Ellsworth. He serves on our board. He's been on the board for quite a while. And he's really, I think he enjoys it. And, you know, a lot of it, it's as nice as it is to have people on our board that are familiar with the system. It's nice to have community people to help educate um, others, you know, because that's how we people understand. So, um, and like I said, we, I do email, email reminders, and it's usually the fifth Thursday of the month. This month we have to change just because of the deadlines that this uh, grant is due on May 1st. Um, but we, we try to be as consistent as possible. Like I said, it's pay mileage, have lunch. It doesn't take more than an hour. You mean, so you mean you're quarterly? You mean quarterly. At most, in over the lunch hour, on thir usually the fifth Thursday of the month at noon. Practices what we do to support each of those principles. Um, we are fully staffed. We have five officers and myself that supervise um, roughly about 207, 211, usually hovers around there. Um, we do, um, and our goal is support uh, just wanting to follow those principles. Um, back in the back, I should have tapped them all. There is a budget summary. Uh, uh, our budget request is $424,591.39, and that is the, uh, 
that's just the summary of, of where our money uh, comes from. And of course, the majority of salaries, then we also um, want to have money for uh, travel, training, and of course, just our regular bills. We are rent for, we do operate rent free. We have, have a, our main office in Great Bend is a county building, and also we uh, have offices in each of the courthouses. Authorize the chairman to sign the contract. So I'll make a motion to authorize the chairman 
So sign the contract with Tariff Fund. Uh, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to authorize myself to sign the contract with Tariff Fund. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried.
have anything to go to it. So, I mean, with all she's done and, and going to do, I, I believe she deserves that rating. Right. It's an emergency response. Dispatcher. Yeah. What, what they do is like... They the, go out to the EOC. And right. Yeah. And if we have like a big fire or yeah. tornado or whatever, they're going to come out to kind of relieve some of the pressure off dispatch. And I suppose they... They'll probably be out there tonight. Probably. But she's on range four, five right now, and I'd like to move her to four six. Okay. I think the thing that I really want to know is if your opinion of whether she's doing a good job. Well, she, she is. Um, I, I mean, I've always felt like if they're not up to where they should be, I'm not going to have. They did give everybody, you know, Right. Across the board, so if we're going to raise anybody, we want to make sure that they're deserving. Of it. Right. I agree. One thing that I've observed about Amy, she has people skills. I mean, if you walk in there, you're you're going to get an answer, and you're going to be greeted, and so on and so forth. So I I feel that, uh, even based on your recommendation, I. I feel that she's deserving of an increase. I'll make a motion that we increase Amy Clustin from range 4 or 5 to range 4 or 6. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion that we have a second to move Amy Clustin <coughs> from range 4, step 5 to range 4, step 6. All in favor say aye. 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 Well, I'm so quick to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he has already marked it off. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, and I haven't talked to Randy this week about the video camera oh, stuff, but I did last week, and he said he'd visit with me today about it. They, I mean, it should be close. Yeah. I think we're ready on this end. Right, it's, we are on this end. It's that down end. there. He was yeah. going to have to get with the tech guy. And, right. Yeah, he's got the wires and everything all run upstairs. Yep. So. And uh, <clears throat> originally, I talk to you guys about the <coughs> digital fingerprinting which you put into my budget. Um, I haven't got one yet because I've talked to, been talking to a lot of different sheriffs that have them and there's some of them that's got some bugs to them and I don't want to spend the money on something that we're going to have a problem with. So I'm still working on that. But I will we'll get one so we can so I've sent a minister directly to the state. Good question. Do we have any security cameras around the courthouse at night? We do not. I think we have a look at something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. I heard about that. Well, not only that. I mean, you know, Should late it. at night, when, I don't know how you dispatchers, if they lock the doors or not. Well, you know, this is one, one, one person. That door. I think that would be one at each entrance. Yeah. Or one that's open, you certainly. Yeah. Right. And see that that door where you come in the sheriff's office from the from the right. right. It's supposed to have a buzzer on it. And when they did all the rewiring in my office, they never hooked it back up. And because it should be locked and then they can buzz you in. And it, it, oh, I see. But uh, yeah. It was always a little back in there. Yeah. And it's never been hooked back up, and so I'm going to... did the electrical work. Jim. Right. Well, I called him. I still think it's a security I would, I say, I would, I would <coughs> like to get a, a bid for a security system in the, around the courthouse and the annex. I do. I think that's a money well spent. Uh, I would agree. I can't believe we don't have nothing like that. I have no idea. Got a security alarm. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Better for him to see. Yeah. I can do that. And I don't know if it needs to be out of the courthouse general or uh, I think I'll share this budget. We've got buildings. I guess we're going to get it. 
Oh, Only in Stafford County. Might be interesting to see who walks by. <laughs> it is. The ones I've got up there. It's interesting what you see. I'm sure. Can you actually Wait. walk in at night? Oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> it's just a few extra creeper activities that take place that oh, right. shouldn't be. <laughs> or you want me to look at something like you have or not? I would. I yeah, I would. I mean, we, you know, I would. Yeah. What yours? Well, I mean, I've got so quite a few, yeah. but I mean, I've got like twelve cameras. Plus, I did the bar. Plus, I did my house. I mean, it was almost twenty eight thousand dollars. But that's window glass break stuff, right. and inside cameras, and motion detectors. I don't know if you need all that. Either. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, I just call it the gate security, but, you know, Satellite Pros that has a type of security system, Nate and does, there's quite a few. We just concluded a county board of health meeting this morning, and one of the things that came up was we did not have a rabies vaccine for the county resolution. Right. Do yeah. we still have that? Did you get a copy of that? Doors have a copy we don't have anything for like strange vicious dogs or anything. No, I talked to Shane about that the other day. There is no state stat, but there is on vicious dogs. <clears throat> but as far as dogs are in the large, there's, there's no, no state, state statute. statute. So, so maybe like that's I something said, we need to look into. Yeah, if, if there was a county resolution, at least we could write a ticket. If they, Does Ellsworth County have a rabies resolution? Do you know? Are dogs running at large? No, they don't. I don't know any county that does, but Saline County, of course, Saline County has one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Saline County would have one, probably. Most likely. So oh, Saline wow. County, they really police the unincorporated areas. They have really strict zoning. I mean, like you have to have now 80 acres, you know, all in your, you know, your name mm -hmm. to build without going before the zoning board and asking for a variance. Mm -hmm. That's pretty extreme. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that that really reminds me too. Like, uh, your rendering services won't pick up horses? Uh, you mean the people who pick up dead cows? Yep. They will not pick up horses. Okay. So, and this has come up twice now. We've had a dead horse and the neighbor complained because of the smell and the there's nothing I can find that we can do about it. Well, from a health standpoint. Well, we've called courts. Is what we've done. Hmm. But as far as law well, enforcement, well, yeah, if, if you if you have you know large dead animals on your property, <laughs> you're, 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 you're beyond, probably yeah. creating some type of nuisance. But the fact of the matter is, um, and nobody wants to dip in their pocket and pay. You know. To Dead animals from somebody else's property. Right. Used to be uh, they for dead animals, even cows. Yeah. I don't know if they take them up or nothing. Now that they, for a while, you had to pay them to pick them up. Well, it was two or three years ago. We paid five hundred bucks to have a horse buried. Maybe that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but see, I don't want to get that. Yeah, it'll be a little bit of horse mortician. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I can't believe the KDHG or somebody don't have something in place about it. Well, what if, it, if it's you know, if an animal, like a horse or a cat or a hog or whatever, is hit on the county road, then we want, we have to remake it. Right. right? Yeah. And there's, there are state statutes, you know, but essentially you have to keep your animals in clothes. Right. And then, and we've sold some before. Mm -hmm. you know. Stray cattle. Right, stray yeah. cattle. Yeah. Horse. That's the but problem with horses right now. See, they're not working. Yeah. Right now. And people are just. But the issue about rabies, I mean, with guns and raccoons and all that are the main culprits in long time a dog. And we got a rabid dog and 
you know, the cities have ordinances. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's yeah. some of the counties have ordinances. I guess Barton County, we you know for certain, pretty loose. Yeah. I figured there'd be something in place, but I'm kind of shocked that there isn't really. Are you going to check this? Just make you aware of it. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. How's your big cow case coming along? Well, actually, um, I still don't have any reports from Hayes or Oklahoma, but I've got a disc that I'm going to make, have Randy make a copy of today because it's the interview. Okay. And I can't, I don't know if Randy can enhance it to make it louder, but I can't hear it. You know. I can always take it towards the Mid-America production there in Salina. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they love me. I mean, they've been taking this stuff there for 20 years. Uh, I don't know whether we're just getting bad equipment or what the deal is. I mean, I've, I've had this problem before. They, they seem to be able to resuscitate. Yeah. Well, supposedly he confesses to the on the cattle here, but I can't hear it, so. Well, I'll take the Mid-American production. All right, I'll get it to you, Jay. Thank you. I'm always fascinated by these places where they can, you know, unfreeze frozen jump drives and whatnot. I mean, that's all far over my head. I just came down here to sign a bunch of letters we're sending out to the people who have to tax delinquent properties. Lisa came up with 36, 38, something like that. And uh, last time we sent these letters out, about two years ago, we had really good success. Indeed, the Chinese guy who owned the school <laughs> sent us you know, $26,000. <laughs> and so I'm, you know, fingers, okay, fingers crossed, uh, it will have the same response, because we had about a 75%, 80% positive response last time. So hopefully we'll have the same. Yeah. So those go off the mail today, and of course I, you know, it says you, you take your money to lease and help its office, I don't touch money. I stay away from the money that's not money. And, uh, the uh, other thing I came down out here for today was to pick up a, a disc of somebody who confesses to a crime from five years ago. He wandered in, wow, confessed. And, Guilt from the you know, basically uh, confessed to molesting a six-year-old. Uh -huh. So they went and talked to the six-year-old who's now 11. And she says, yeah, I told my parents about it. They didn't believe me. So, so it's a corroborated confession. So I have that one file. Did he have a previous record on anything? He had a history, history of mental problems. And I've dealt, dealt with it before. And I have to also hit up a, it's plenty of deals when you get in the back of your mind. I think I've seen this guy's name on a police report before, so I'm going to have to go back in my vault and start digging through stuff. That's, uh, anything, you know. It's serious. I, I, I usually hang on to for the statute of limitations, which there was an allegation of a sex crime is 10 years. So I don't have a statute of limitations problem at all. What, what is the deal on registered sex offenders? What do they have to do? To okay, if, if, you, if you're subject to the registration requirement, you have to register in person the sheriff's office for the month of your birth and every third month thereafter, essentially four times a year, really. at the sheriff's office in the county where you live. Likewise, if you work outside the county of residence, you have to do the same registration at the sheriff's office there. And they take your picture, and it actually goes on uh, a website that's uh, public accessible. And uh, 
to know. And if you move, you have to, you know, you come in and fill out a form with the sheriff's office saying I'm located in such and such county, and then within three days of your new place, you have to register. There's about eight or nine or ten ways you can run afoul of the registration law. Uh, the, uh, they've expanded the registration law to, at first it just included sex offenders, now it includes certain, quote, violent criminals, and also include certain drug offenders who are engaged in the manufacture and distribution of certain substances. What is the definition of avoid contact with anybody 18? What if you, under 18, what if you go to Dillon's and... Well, that's, that's not a product, place of public accommodation, yeah. Now, they put, can they say hi to somebody? Can they... You know, it, incidental contact wouldn't be covered, it would be a purposeful contact. Okay. But uh, sex offender registration, it's typically for sex offenders, I think we're talking in terms of either 25 years or a life. For the others, it's like 10 years or 15 years or something. In fact, we have to correct the sentence on Mr. Markley, who's in prison. We've got to bring him back in prison. A couple of June motion may make his lifetime as opposed to whatever would have to be in 60 months or so. Legislature is always tinkering with DUI laws and the offender registration laws. So it's a very bold attorney who tries to tell you what's in one of those statutes without having the book open in front of them because they keep tinkering with it. Indeed, the registration laws, the first time, uh, for, for, when they first got on the books, the violation of the Class A misdemeanor. Then a couple of years later, they made it a level 10 felony, which is a big thing. Then a couple of years later, they made it a level 7. Then they made it a level 6. And a second time offense is a level 3 felony. So there's real teeth there. Indeed, the penalty for not registering is oftentimes more than the penalty was for the crime that made you have to register. I know you can check them out. My yeah. daughter in Cincinnati, Ohio, she could tell you where they all, oh, there's one that lives eight blocks away, there's one that lives five blocks away there. I thought, okay. And like I say, now they have pictures because every time, you know, the, the, the theory is every time you come into the sheriff's office here, they're supposed to snap your picture and send it off, download it, or upload it, or the trip is, <laughs> to the database, you know, yeah. so. Well, we're poor we No, I didn't. I was the That was day before, man. It looks good. Yeah, I hope that works. Wow, we. I hope that works with this one. Also. I'm thinking this. That's thing. an ugly picture. Oh no! <laughs> that is that is supposed. You're not supposed to have that. I haven't even started on that. <laughs> yeah, that's an ugly picture, is right. Oh, the list. Yeah, and that's sorted by. I thought it would be easier if I just sorted them by date when they were purchased. Oh, mm -hmm. And then I don't like sometimes I don't want to call them. So this is the date of the vehicle, though, right? Uh, yes, and it's the date of the purchase. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
he 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 thought we were writing a letter tonight, and so that's why I communicated with him. He thought we were writing a letter, and we thought he was, so he did not draft something. Like that. His his that. boss sat there and said, "You write the letter." When we were in Hutch that day, he said, "You compile the letter," and, and I don't know if he would send it to KDOT or whether he was yeah. to send it to Bernie. What is it? We're supposed to send it to Scott Moore. Yeah, yeah. right. To Scott. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that was, and I didn't know if you talked to Stafford or the one who talked to Stafford or the one who talked to Stafford. No, I took, I took that uh, flat map or whatever it's called in there. And um, the comment was, well, that you and, and uh, Bergie had gone down there and looked at that intersection several months ago. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I said, the interesting thing is that you own the property in the middle of the road you know, to, to uh, the co-op. Well, yeah, we knew that. So I said, you know, we thought it would be just the county, the state, and, and the co-ops involved, but now, that now, by the looks of this boundary of the city limits, then the city's involved. So there's four, four entities involved with that, mm -hmm. with that project. And they said, they, or she said, that the clerk said that she would give that to the council and let them look at it. That was the end of the conversation. I had but that's that's a pretty good price. Well, in my a, opinion. Well, I don't think I don't think. I had two Kansas co-op members hit me up yesterday at the track meeting because they talked about it at their last meeting. They wondered if anything was being done. I said, hey, yeah, there's something yeah. being done. And they, they, I guess they would just like to have it up. Is it all right to call them and just say that things yeah, are being we're in done? The process. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to. It's just not going to happen. Not it's not going to be. That's basically what I told. So them. are they going to make this road wider I don't to accommodate the trucks turning off of it? Because if we don't make it wider, it ain't going to do any good to fix it. The well, problem's yeah. on the shoulder where they keep going off the shoulder. Well, that's let's see. That's all. That's the way. Yeah, but that's all. Well, that, yeah, that, I know, but that, I mean, if they're not going to make it wider where they can turn across into the ditch to get back where they need to be, I mean, they're just, we're still going to continue to have problems. I mean, they're going to make it the same width as the road, because the problem is they're coming off the edge of the road, turning it, and it's pushing into the ditch, basically, because they're off the edge of the road. Well, that's curb and gutter along the west side, and that was all asphalt from the curb and gutter, and, and, and eventually is what it did. It was pushed it, it out. It, it pushed it all out. Well, if you put concrete in there, it's not going to push that concrete. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know if they were planning to go no. a little, you know, three or four feet wider and, and we for could, 10 feet or 20 feet where they turn. Yeah, and, and, and we and, because it does, actually, it falls off pretty good on the other side. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. think they'd want to go off there. <laughs> Yeah, I would. I would. Well, you can just see, you can just see where that dirt's pushed yeah. back. But that, I mean, that, would, that was why we were wanting to go with concrete because yeah. concrete won't well, shut. I mean, concrete is. Yeah. Because I mean, it looked like it's extended like three feet <clears throat> along that curve line. Yeah, I think a lot of that. And there's no, and you know, one, one of them, you know, asked about well, what about drainage? Well, you could take it clear to the edge of the field because yeah. the field is. Two feet below the, the road. Yeah, the drainage isn't a problem. It's yeah. what, I mean, we had it. There's a place down there on the west side, just north of the bridge, that we had to get cut out because I don't know if it undermined it underneath the curb and guttering. I mean, it did a fountain and it all water, so we went in there and the concrete saw at the lowest point and cut it out. We haven't had any wash in the since. So, you dropped something, Joe. That's, that's what we did that was. Yeah. And I am. I, I need to go talk to this guy to see what he got out of this. So yeah. usually, you know, when you have <laughs> these yeah. impromptu meetings, you everybody. One person comes away with this. One person and comes away with this. And another person yeah. comes away with this. So well, I drove by there the other day, and, and I thought about that. And I looked at it. I stopped and looked at it. And I thought, man, I wonder if they, because nobody's really said how wide it was going to be. Yeah, because I yeah. I wonder if they were going to go a little bit wider. 
just in that 20 feet or so. And, 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 and John, I didn't, John didn't really think he needed to. Oh. And the engineer, so. Yeah. I mean, that well, was I'm, I'm surprised at that cost. Because yeah. I, I figured it'd be at least at least a minimum of 150000 plus. So the 127 Bruce Craig, when I first talked to him, I mean, as I was leaving, he said, you don't think that would be more than $50,000 or half, do you? And I said, well, it might be a little bit. But do you think that price is the final good price to tell him? Um, uh, well, he said his, his opinion is the probable construction cost. I mean, until, I you, until you actually get somebody in the business and the type of contract. Well, by the time you, you know, a year from now or eight months, by the time they finally get to do the project, yeah. he knows what the cost of concrete is going to be. Yeah, I mean, it's that's not a good cheaper. Yeah, that's not a good or some, right. something next spring. Yeah. Yeah. This thing has been like some of the other problems we've had. It's been there for as long as I've been. But you divide that 4 ways, it'd be less than what he's yeah, said. Or however they're going to Well, it depends on the you know, cost of the project. Yeah. 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 You know, money's tied with everybody. I mean, it just oh, is. It's just the way the world works. You know, but I don't foresee that changing anytime soon. Yeah. Hell, if you're looking at the news coming out of Wichita today, Beechcraft and you know, Textron and some of the, a couple of the others are running off people. Yeah. Uh, six or seven days is part of that. Be just on any Well, it'd be their, um, wherever their approach is. What, what would the states? Yeah, it's not very high. I, well, well, I thought they said the state guy was wanting to get the city involved so that because they could get if a, they would a if, grant or something. Yeah, if they money if the city would annex the rest. that other half of the road. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that won't happen. Well, like, well I he mean, they might if, 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 if they the case, understand the city's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, and that was and the process uh, starts all over. Again. The project manager said that. He so said if the city would annex that that intersection, then that you could get, then it would fall under some other acronym funding. And that's not going to happen. But you know, the other thing, not only the the problem of turning and stuff. If you're coming from the south, going north. And if you're coming a little too fast, it's rough. And oh, there's a stop sign. You know, someone not familiar with that intersection. Yeah, because it is. A little, it yeah, is it's just, uh, weird. The surroundings yeah. are just strange. I, I mean, I agree with yeah. that. Uh, I mean, there's there's all sorts of signage up there with, with that wider with that wider road and all that other stuff. It's it's kind of strange. Because if you hit the brakes a little hard and you start wheel hopping. Would there be a possibility of anybody from the state coming out that we could have a council member, and commissioner, and maybe even Bruce Perry will come up and meet, talk about that? Or do you, is your correspondence just strictly by calling? Uh, no, they're needing something. They're, I'm sure they're wanting a paper trail, something they're writing. You know, so, uh, but I'll call Scott and ask him. I got the impression that uh, who's the chief engineer? Bernie. Benny. Kind of dumped it into Scott's lap. So oh, I'm sure they're pushing it through their channels. Yeah. Well, if Scott was up here and we knew he was coming, I'd like to involve Bruce and at least knowing that we're doing something. Okay. Um, I, I'll see if I can do something. Get back with you. All right. I'd just like a timeline. Because yeah, he, so yeah, like, like I said, this is <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the other thing. Yeah. Like Christy and Ben talked to me about when are you going to do this? I said, well, after harvest sometime, and that's the last we heard, right? Yeah, uh, and then yeah, you know, they talked about the temporary deal pot mix and stuff. And I'm like, well, now, I, I really don't see the waste. Could pay for that. I, I really don't the see the No, I'm not. 
I really don't see well, he said I don't see the state I don't, I don't see the waste of money doing that. Do the intersection. They're, they're and then turn around and tear it out. When, when I don't, yeah, we yeah. can get by. I mean, if it gets rough, we'll go over there and put some rock in and smooth it out. Keep it good while they're probably getting it. That's why we, that's why we've so always we've been done. Been yeah, I mean, that's when they, when they call, we go over. Okay. Because, Phil, how many feet back from the center of Highway 50 back? It state. was almost to the bridge. Well, I mean, no, state responsibility. Oh. Uh, Remember, so. we did the same thing with a K-19. Yeah. Or um, 219. Yeah, it, to their right-of-way line is almost, is almost to, to the, well, wherever that corner post is, where their technical yeah. right-of-way is. So it'd be to just town. Two, but yeah. then, then they also have that other added easement if they ever want to do something that they could have yeah. so far. And that's why we're doing this. I thought they found out that their easement went clear back Yeah, they, the yeah they could. I mean, technically, oh, or so most of the time. The whole span of road that we're looking at. Yeah, right? so, yeah, there it was. Yeah. It was quite a bit, I think. The but I, I guess you could relay and Kurt, but yes, we are doing something. Yeah. We, I figured they must be talking about it. Two, two of the board members wouldn't come up to me at the track meet and talk to me. Are you still planning on doing something? Well, I'm sure. I mean, it's, it's far from trucks. Or they could restrict semi use and just come in with two ton trucks and yeah. get pickups. And I'm sure three yeah. might get bristle like that. I mean, we're all in scale. Yeah, I mean, it's, it wasn't the best setup, but you know what? It's what well, we got, so well, it's what we got working with. Back in the day, yeah. it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. They got some sideboards. And yeah, I'm sure that was the late 60s or late 50s, early 60s, the one that thing was put in. Yeah, I'll choose Heisen Mark as our name. It's never quite as high as anybody around here. Yeah. Harold was putting on Harold. Larry can't recall the history. And then it came up And then Dustin, I said, well, I'll bring it up to you guys. I said, Larry, I'm reluctant to put drillings down there and start something that's going to be more expensive for us. Because, I mean, we put the millings there and they'll pot out. If we don't come back down and see them. So, and then when we start selling, they start potting out. Then we end up patching them out. I mean, so, where do you start and where do you stop? I mean, and I said, I'm, I'm going to put this, I'm, I'm going to let them decide because I said, we've done everything that I know that we can do. I mean, I really, other than that, I mean, it's to look at it from the curve to go ahead and go west of Harold that reaches about four feet. We've got some noise, but like I said, I'm reluctant to do that just because it's an added expense. What's he like to do? He wants to speak. Is he getting any ideas? No. Is this the road where the house is in the, in the valley? And then the sun moves back off to the east and they're back on the hill. Right, right on the south end. I imagine he gets a little dust but nothing like his, his dad's place on. So. I mean, I understand what they're saying, but... Yeah. I mean, we try... We, I wouldn't like it, but it's dirt road. I don't know what else you do. Yeah. And that's what I say. a lot of dust going down my road. Right? And then, you know, yeah. like, well, it would be nice to Yeah. I mean, we tried some uh, calcium chloride. And we probably didn't incorporate it right in. After reading everything, the salesman would come out. What would that cost? Just a dollar and a nickel a gallon. So, I mean, it's not exactly cheap, but it's. That's good. Uh, well, I think we tried to do the two curves. We tried to do the math. And, well, we ended up getting a hold of it, so I mean, so we did the two curves. And, uh, I mean, is that economically worth a try again? If we'd incorporate it a little better, maybe it would be shame. But, I mean, before we go this, I would say. I would rather try that. Than, yeah. I mean, if you don't think those millions are going to hold, I mean, I'd rather try that. Than well, I just, hate, I, guess. I just hate to go to the other expense of, you know, but putting I would down hate, there. I, I don't want to have the maintenance of 1,500 feet of, of a million blacktop 
just for 1,400 feet. I mean, I don't want that to, in the bad. I don't mean that in a bad way. No, it's just, not, yeah. no, I mean the time and travel time it's going to take is just. No, it is for me. I mean, I'd rather try the calcium chloride. Way, the little traps too. And, you know, it's all yeah, just to make it harder. Or the, the calcium chloride. It is a dust suppressor. It just kind of steals it. You could tell when you did it. But, but you, but, but you need. And we, we didn't open it up, and you need to open it up and get that stuff down in there. And I mean, a lot of places back east, I know some counties back east that they do this for people, they do this for people, and they wait for And after you know, the first time the county did it, and after that, they build them out. You know, I don't know if that would be much success rate right doing that. But I do know in a couple other counties that's what they do. I mean, it's estimate. You're saying for uh, you put a whole semi load in that from the curve around? Well, no, it probably wouldn't. We probably figure have to figure out because it comes back from that case. Yeah. Where it comes out. Do you have any other places that would? I mean, if you did get a full load, if we well, some of them curve. You know, some of them curves will end up that way. Ah, not really. Well, it needs rain. I mean, well, it needs rain, and I, I, I'll, <laughs> you know, where we went over and fixed. Leesburg and Midwest, those were, I don't care about that. They're so much better than they were. But, but I'm sort of like, I would like to find some material down there somewhere, dig some like a pond or something that we can go in there and cap that road and, and make, a, you know, make a nice ride. Yeah. It, it, I can understand why the people are here. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> well, if it do not consistently rain or you can consistently yeah. maintain the road, you're not going to hold it. No. You gotta have the moisture to hold. So I mean, we're kind of in a yeah. no-win situation right now. Oh, yeah. no moisture, but it might be a good ideal time to put that stuff on. The, the, the calcium deal yeah. might be a time to, but you're gonna you're gonna have to dig that road up. I mean, you're talking incorporating it, are you? Yeah, we we take we take the scab. We did no, it wouldn't be that. We just take the scab off, oh, get it opened up, and then and then spray it down, and then roll it down, and roll it around. Yeah, I think that'd be worth a try. And, that, and that's what I saw that we did wrong the first time. I mean, we just we, sprayed it on top of the yes. rolling. Yes, and that's why the drive. Yeah. There wasn't very good direction from yeah. that. Yeah, right. I mean, you're talking $4,000 probably? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, try or? I would rather do. I would rather rather try to have first than do the millings. Because if we do the millings and we're going to put the asphalt there, we're going to we're going to have to go in and strip all that clay and, and egg rock out of there. Because we're is that something you would suffice them? You think, or do you think they would? I think if we try it here, and think before too much longer. I think we got a couple, two or three ones. Stop it. S-C-O-T-T, Oh, wait. S-C-O-T. Yes. Got it. Um, in 2011, you paid $5,000. I know we got a couple of those, because I think we tried to go. You've done it. Uh, in 10, you bought four loads of it. Okay. And then in 11, you bought. So they're trying to have the road. Yeah. Yeah. How's that holding? Well, there's before that. Right. It's it's in the that they did there. 1,598 gallons. Okay. So five. In 11. Okay. You know, the advantage of that road right there is the traffic flow. Oh, yeah. And they observe weight limits. Yeah. <laughs> We, we've had some issues, yeah. but it, like I said, it's where we put that clay and then yeah. rock down to, and it got wet. And we've had some issues there, but the, other than the edges, it's it's pretty decent. I mean, we're going to overlay it. Just, we're going to put a cap on it, and hopefully a lot of the issues go away. But that's why I thought, you know, if we're going to do this with that clay and I mean, if we would go with the mounds, we'd have to take that clay and rock out of it, because yeah. as soon as it gets any moisture at all, it becomes 
So that would be an added expense. So if you did so, yeah, well, it, it would take some work down there. If you did the millions, what do you think you'd have dollar-wise? I mean, you're going to be at least twice what the calcium would cost. You're going to have the same labor in it, obviously, I would assume. Well, I think if you did the millions, you'd have more than that in it, because then by the time you got it all the way down, you might have set all summer along, you know, try to mine it out, yeah. and then see it sometime you know, this, this fall. And the oil year. is... Well, it's going to be $2.05 a gallon. So it's double the price back then. That's what I would try. Try the calcium. Mm -hmm. okay. We might have an inch rain every week for the next, till next fall. I hope you're right. Does that calcium chloride repel the water? Though? Yeah, it does. It would, I would think. Yeah. Like it's all right, right? Yeah. I know. I know they've had some success. I put it up in South Dakota. So yeah. yeah. Like I said, I think it was a Do we need a commission for that or don't you get the dollars to it? Yeah. I understand what you're saying about. No, I do. Yeah. I understand what I mean, you're saying about. I, that. I, I, did, I reacted that way because I ain't had a lot of time to think about. It. I know, but, but I know. But I don't think was, I don't think my opinion's going to change. I mean, I, yeah. You know, the more I thought a little bit about it after our last Wednesday meeting, you know, I. That's a lot of money for a dump truck. I mean, that's a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of money for a dump truck. But it's, you know, yeah, same time, it's going to be twice as long. So right, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sitting on that side yeah. of the table. <laughs> and there's a world of difference. So. But I don't, you know, you are right, we got to rotate the equipment, but, you know, I... Yeah, well, I, I mean, really think here for a while we need to get our feet under this. I mean, I need to okay, get that's fine. Some, I'm, that's my opinion. These two might well, tell you to get them off. That's my opinion. I, I think we need to do something, but I just don't think now is the right time to do it. Well, the thing is that, I mean, if we were going to do it, it takes so long to, to get, get it right. That's, yeah. that's why I was trying to pull the I mean, if there's something we need to do it. on your spreaders, I mean, maybe we look at or your even your blades. I mean, if would, yeah, would there be any? That's a thought I had. Would there be any way of using that new snow plow to work on? You know, and then, then if you did buy a new truck, you could take that snow plow off and put it on a new truck. Could we just do the snow plow part of it right now? I could do some investigating on it and, and look. So all of your trucks that you have now, you use them to plow snow. All the dump trucks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would spread the cost yeah. out a little bit. Is that right? The only thing that's against us is time. The age of age, age of the machinery. Yeah. And, and I don't want to, you know, it's just like, you know, you said the load was 8,000 hours. Well, you're, you're caught in, you, you trade it now, you trade it later because you're getting into the time where you're going to start spending money on it to either overhaul it, and if you overhaul it, you know, and it's not worth any more if you're overhauling it means you don't. So you don't want to get a catch twenty two. I mean, right. you, know, you know. Yeah. I I'm mean, not well, just you. like this truck. I yeah. Mean, you I got know. a you got one hundred and thirty thousand miles on a new overhaul. You know, mechanically. Yeah, there's other parts to that truck that are going to show age, but I mean, overall, mechanically, that truck should be mechanically sound for it. For, the, it, power, for the power plant. Yeah. yeah. If it was beyond limited use. You know, that's what I'm seeing. If we, since we bought the end dumps to shift that use from the older trucks, park them and only use them to plow with or overlay with, or you know, if you put them on limited service. Well, know. right now we got. I mean, we've been cleaning ditches and I've got. Yeah. Instead of stopping and cleaning ditches, we're hauling sand and we're yeah. hauling rocks. Yeah. I mean, the mother guy. So we're just doing more rocks. Awesome. We don't work with with all the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, I'll call them and tell them I'm just going to hold fire right now. And I, I, I would, 
even want to ask if if, it, if we did a volume, you know, if we did a instead of doing a few trucks at a time, if we do four, if you can get a better buy if you buy four or five at a time. Well, that's, that's why this is about as good a buy as you can because it's for the state. state deal. It's not right off of the state, right. other than the upgrade for the Western Star, Star truck, which yeah. I really see. Which I think is, it, I, I think it's a better truck. Yeah. We're going to hold it, you know, twenty to twenty-five. So you don't think if we if you bought three or four or five of them at a time that you would get a better buy from the state price even? Because they because they're going to they're going to buy upwards of hundred and I don't know how. I mean, Barton County did some stock gap stuff with, with buying some state trucks, which were before they went to these bigger trucks with the, like the DT-466 and the other a lot smaller truck. But I mean, they did some stock gap stuff like that. But they're starting to see, you know, people said, oh, that, that looks new. Oh, yeah, it does look new. We take care of our stuff. I mean, the guy's cut so yeah. hard. But, you know, just because it looks new doesn't mean it well, is. I mean, yeah. you can yeah. take care of an old old car and make it look good for a long time. As long as one person is driving it, it's great. But you, you put more than one person to drive in anything, and it's just, it's just hard on people. I mean, it is. So, but we can visit later and see, yeah. see where we go. That, that would be my, that, that was the only reason I was pushing for it. I mean, because, you know, we're talking about going through all this season, so I mean, yeah. that truck had another 20 to 45,000 miles on it. So, I mean, it's, you weren't going to park it when the, when the motor went bad, so. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, your other major outside of the transmission rear ends, I mean. Yeah. Other than that, you know, it's, it, it's, pretty, it's usually the cab, the doors, right, and yeah. all that kind of stuff that, that takes the kids on. Yeah. Yeah, the cabs just, they get loose and they fall apart. Well, you've seen it. Yeah. I mean, you, you've been around equipment long yeah. enough to see it. And yeah, where you pull the trigger, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, know. where where they come up with 10 years was usually because that was where they got the best in the money. Yeah. But I mean, as you can see, I mean, we've got some stuff that's going to be a lot longer than 10 years. Right. I mean, you got a square box that is 50, 75, 100 hours on a year. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do that to 10 years. Yeah. I mean, it just makes no sense. So, I think that's all I know. Things I screwed up. To. Well, that one's automatic no on that too. <laughs> what's, uh, uh, what's the brand of the loader? Which one? Uh, I don't know. How many? How many do you have? We have two loaders. Well, there's one. one. One's a Komatsu and one's a Caterpillar. There's one loader. And then Darren's, I think, even Darren's loader's in there somewhere. Oh, and that, was, that was one, was one of yours. Yes. He got rid of one he had. And Picked up the one that yes. So what are these calculators? Um, which one do you use? The back of it. The 289C is the skid steer. Oh, okay. What's a 93604? Uh, oh, that's a motor I can redo them. No, the no, I mean, I know what they are, but I mean, yeah. it doesn't always tell you where to go through that. I can do that for That'd you. That'd be nice. What's a 936 F? Okay. That, that, is a, that, that is a, yeah, that's Darren's loader. Okay. It's just the size of the loader. Okay. By the way, totally off the subject, but similar to what you're in. What is the going price for Redimix concrete now? Mm, depends. Uh, six out of ten? Or? I don't know. Oh, so it depends on what you get next. We just got an estimated cost of 10 inches of concrete tape. I thought around I 80 <laughs> Around $87 a yard. Is it? I believe that's right. So it is A E N R D J. 
concrete, 10, 10 inch. Is that the ratio to? That's probably sand. four thousand pound rock. I mean, it's some sort of four thousand pound rock mix, I'm sure. Because they they do they do go up on on concrete. Uh, the concrete pavement is more than sidewalk. Uh, it's usually a lot more tends to strike. Yeah. Right, I was just curious. What I was going to try to figure out how many yards is involved in that. Did you say? Let's say twelve hundred. Twelve hundred yards. Yeah. He's got twelve hundred yards at seventy five dollars a yard. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I was just looking at the total. Oh uh, well, yeah. I was the more hung up on the flagger that's going to work one hour and give me twenty five dollars. <laughs> and I did say to him that he, uh, he did say he was that he might have sign off on that Irish girl who runs all these townships. I mean, he was a senior. Side we tried to do this. Like oh, the oh, oh I see. Yeah. 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 Those are the ones that express it. Yeah. And then we're going to do that. We're going to try to go ahead and incorporate the engineering into it. Oh, I'm sorry. going to be out in the way. We're going to be out in the way. I mean, like I told them, it's a real good deal for you. Yeah. Yeah. Someday the chain starts charging mobilization on its prayers. I learned something. It's like it's like renewing license online and there's a two dollar convenience fee. Yeah. Oh yeah, for using it. Well, that's all for using the credit card mostly. Well, and but still, if you walk in and write a check, you know, pay them. It's an inconvenience. Okay, well, I think that's all I have on my list for this morning. Okay, thank you. You don't want to you don't think that from 2012 would work? <laughs> well, if you want to go back to that stage, I'm sure they would. Like I would approve that. I'll okay. make the call oh, right now. What a nice guy. <laughs> what a nice guy. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. No, sure got that pretty fast, though. Swag. Thank you. Looking out for me. Thank you, Billy. Anybody have anything else? I don't. Well, adjourn.